as far as one of our beers go, um, when Ryan told me he was going to spend our life savings to open a brewery, <laughs> my response was, yeah, okay, but I want a peach IPA with mosaic hops. All right, guys, welcome to an episode of the Hoppy Craftsman. I am Chris. I'm Jeff. And we are here at 8-Bit Ale Works. Which is finally. Finally. Finally made this happen. So we are here with. Uh, this is Ryan. And Christina. Yay. Thanks for being on, guys. We yeah. appreciate it. Totally, totally appreciate it. So I guess we start with, what is everybody drinking right now? I am drinking a Hop Assassin's Creed. Same. Same here. Man. I'm drinking the Cyril Figgis. Nice. Alcoholic. Oh. I know. It's terrible. <laughs> I pre-flighted with that. I yeah. uh, I was at work today because I still work a normal full-time job, and um, that's no fun. The I worst. I know, right? Those are the worst. Someone has to support my brewing habit. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, one of the managers was talking about how she's on Weight Watchers, so she like measured out some water and poured it into a wine glass and used a sharpie to mark how much it was so that she could track it properly for her Weight Watchers. <laughs> And she's like, I don't know what kind of person that makes me. I'm like, hey, if, if I've learned anything in the brewing industry in the last three years, it's how to justify alcohol use. <laughs> exactly. exactly. Well, it's funny. Uh, Cena goes with one of our uh, followers. She actually did that for Strong Beer Fest. She actually took and she marked a little line in her cup and figured out how much like a one ounce sample would be and just did one ounces the whole time. See, you learn things. Right? Makes it smart. All teaching experiences. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess we should get into it. Kind of give us a... And not necessarily a brief, but a general story of how we actually started uh, 8-Bit Works. Yes. Yeah, so um, funny thing is it was never supposed to turn into a business. Okay. Um, I started home brewing at this point about 14 years ago, uh, right before I turned 21. Found that loophole just barely too late. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> My first batch was ready like two weeks before I turned 21. Dang. But uh, yeah, so it was just one of those things. I love doing it. Even when I first started, oh, when are you going to open a brewery? When are you going to open a brewery? I'm not. It's a hobby, and I'm going to keep it that way. (laughs) Yeah. Um, One thing led to another. Poor Christina didn't realize that uh, I did home brewing when we met. I waited to drop that bomb on her until we were a couple years in. Perfect. Um, Started doing more with it. Um, Got a refrigerator so that I had temperature control. Uh, next thing we knew, there were seven refrigerators slash freezers slash cellars in the house. A couple of keezers, I'm guessing. Yeah. yeah, and the house was not a big house. It was room for two. <laughs> it's perfect. And uh, we just kind of realized, it's like, you know what? Maybe we should turn this into a brewery. So at that point, did you actually finally tell her you were home brewing? <laughs> <laughs> like when you had all these refrigerators no, just, in your house? I kept trying to tell her I was just an alcoholic. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to think I figured it out a little earlier than I would, that. I, right, yeah. <laughs> Why does he keep boiling all this stuff on the stove? <laughs> I thought it was outside? mess for the longest time. <laughs> yeah, there you go. I right? just like the way it smells. <laughs> it's potpourri. <laughs> Actually, the very first homebrew batch I did, I was in an apartment complex, and the cops showed up towards the end of the boil because the upstairs neighbor called the cops on me and thought I was doing drugs or making drugs. Um, it was. It had to have been like three-year-old hops because they were in the box, <laughs> and those things hit the wort, and that whole apartment started to reek. So, I mean, technically, they weren't wrong. You're making a drug, <laughs> just not the drugs they thought. I'm sure, right? Yeah. I still get that look. Like, I'll I'll take. I have a, a ten-gallon Spike Brewing conical, and I'll take it outside to clean it. And people are looking at me like, "What's that guy doing? Is, do you make meth in that thing?" And I can just like feel all these eyes on me. It's like it's it's not meth. It's just beer. It's all good. Beer, fine. <laughs> My favorite one still was. Um, as we were getting closer to open, so I had anything and everything you could imagine. All the different copper immersion coils to cool the beer down, um, stuff for yeast starters. So the stir trays, the big flasks, the glass carboys, the works. And there was something, I forget what it was. Like we weren't in trouble, but the cops were stopping by for something. I, was there, it when the house was broken into? No, it was before that, else? I think. Oh, okay. So we had this guy, he had to have been out of the academy for two weeks. <laughs> I mean, he was as wet behind the ears as you get. And he shows up and he was already kind of awkward and nervous at the door. It was cold out. And I'm like, you know what? Hey, it's cold outside. You're more than welcome to come in if you want to, you know, finish filling everything out. And he walks in the door 
And that's when I realized that I had all of my homebrewing equipment scattered throughout the place. Weights and scales. and You see this guy freeze and his hand drop towards his belt. He was positive he had just walked into a meth lab and was about to get killed by the guy around the corner. Yeah, right. Like, <laughs> I swear to God, it's gypsum. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's just, no, 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 I'm a homebrewer. Look, there's bottles over there. Please bring your hand back up to a normal level. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's above the waist, above the waist. And that's awesome. So when when was the exact time you figured, like you, you figured out, you know what, I want to take this from homebrewing to actually real business. And please tell me it was, you were playing root beer tapper on and you're like, that's what I want to do for the rest of my life. I just want to like slide beers down a freaking table to a bunch of people. No, it was um, like we'd kind of talked about it a little bit and said, you know, hey, maybe this is something uh, we'll save up and do this when we're closer to 40. All right. Because um, in my mind, for whatever reason, I had it in my head that I needed a million dollars to open a brewery. But that was my random figure. I mean, everybody's always said always you need twice as much money that you think you need and then twice as, <laughs> more than twice as much space for sure. Pretty much. Yeah. So a million sounds right. That sounds, I mean, I would yeah. say a million, right? I'd go with yeah. a million. But, um, it's a rough number. One of the guys that I trained at my old job um, knew JP down at 1055. And he had just recently opened at that time. So um, he sent me down there for a brew day on my birthday. Okay. Wow. And then um, the day before that, Christina had enrolled me um, in a workshop on how to go from a craft brew or how to go from a home brewer to actually opening up a brewery. Damn. Thank, thank you. Yeah, that was his uh, his 30th birthday gift. I sent him to Portland for a week. <laughs> Bend. Bend. Yes. Sorry. Yes. I'm wow. not a hipster. I knew Don't that. you send me to Portland. <laughs> Sorry. Hey, man. I, <laughs> Look, love, I love Portland. It was in Oregon and there was beer. That's the important part, right? <laughs> Sounds were, like Portland to me. Yeah, and were, exactly. And there were neckbeards everywhere. It's all we know. Yeah. Well, hey. <laughs> One of the two. But yeah, I walked down to 1055. Well, didn't walk, drove down. <laughs> walked into 1055. On and uh, it's a good thing JP wasn't uh, a super prideful individual because I looked at his three barrel system and it was set up on something. First words out of my mouth Holy crap, it's a giant homebrew system. <laughs> <laughs> Stab is <laughs> a little backhanded compliment. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. But uh, yeah, I went there. I saw he had that. I realized that there was such a thing as plastic fermenters. Yes. Okay. Which I didn't realize existed. Um, saw how he was doing stuff and suddenly realized this is a lot more attainable than I thought. So um, pretty much that day I said, it's like, okay, I'm going to get started on this right now. And we opened two years later to the day. Mm-hmm. Nice. Wow. That's awesome. Yeah, it was pretty crazy. It was it was a really whirlwind process. Like I remember the conversation had started what a year, year or two before that. Um, Ryan had entered a couple of homebrew competitions and and done pretty well, but we tended not to put a lot of stock into those because it's incredibly subjective. I don't care how strict you say your guidelines are, it is very subjective. Yeah. Um, you know, but he did well and we did a homebrew competition at Stone, actually. And when I saw his face as people were, like, drinking and talking about his beer, because he actually entered the Mayan Chocolasis, which... Very nice. I would say we kind of have a little bit of a following for, a little reputation for. Yes, a few people like that beer. Yeah, a couple <laughs> people. You know, I, I hear some things once in a while. Yeah, once in a while. Um, <laughs> but people's reaction like we could hear people screaming at their friends across the stone gardens oh my god did you try number 30 holy crap (laughs) and like the way he lit up was unlike anything i'd ever seen before and so i like to think i kind of had a feeling at that moment i'm like oh boy we're gonna spend a (laughs) lot of money (laughs) but um you know and the seven fridges were were kind of a hint also um good tip off yeah you know I, I'm really observant. <laughs> now we have eight. <laughs> <It's true. laughs> oh, yeah. You expanded the fridges. You didn't condense them down. He keeps saying he's going to bring them here and get them the heck out of my house. And for some reason, I still have seven fridges in my home. Somebody keeps filling them up with hops. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Christina. <laughs> you know I like IPAs. What can I say? <laughs> so what are what are some of the challenges that you guys face to get from the point, like you said, you went to the school and you did your stuff and you, and you decided you wanted to actually open a brewery to actually opening the doors here. Honestly, the hardest part isn't what most people expect. Um, 
hardest part for us was just kind of securing the location and getting it built out. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, All the stuff dealing with liquor board and TTB and that sort of stuff went pretty easily. Um, That was because I had top secret information. Perfect, right? From your class, they kind of over that, I'm sure, right? A little bit, help kind of with it or no? Not so much uh, going over it in the class. It was just um, the people that work for the TTB and Arizona Liquor Board, they're people. Weird. And if you say please and thank you and you actually treat them like a regular person, stuff moves along way faster than if you scream and yell and stomp your feet and why is this taking so long? You're an idiot, all that other stuff. Right. I found out, though, with general contractors... I'm sorry if anyone listening is a general contractor. It works the exact opposite. (laughs) And the nicer you are, the slower they work. And the meaner you are, the faster stuff gets done. It's always the the, the squeaky wheel gets the the grease kind of thing. Yeah. Makes sense. And that was really rough for me because I spent so much time in customer service being on the other end. Being that person getting screamed at and yelled at and cursed at. Well, my business is failing because of you. So, well, no, your business is failing because you don't answer the phone. (laughs) That is is really tough. (laughs) But, uh, so, yeah, it was one of those, like, we had to fire the real estate broker, uh, the landlord's real estate broker. Wow. Because. It's a tough conversation to have. Six months in, and I still didn't have a price per square foot. We'd gone through their architect. I'd had him draw out initial plans. Um, the works, uh, finally city of Avondale, they were dying to have us here. Yeah. Right. And I reached out to him and I'm like, guys, I'm on, this is my final location in Avondale. There's no other spots that I can look at. If you have a magic button, please push it now. <laughs> You're right. And 15 minutes later, I had the landlord's direct line wow. called him, said, Hey, can we fire your broker? And I just worked directly with you. And finally stuff started moving along. Jeez. And I just want to say, like, we've heard horror stories of, of cities who make it very difficult for breweries to open. And, and I can sort of understand why. I think it's a misguided notion. But, right. you know, I understand that because they don't necessarily know any better, they have a certain perception. Um, but that said, the city of Avondale has been amazing to work with. I grew up in the East Valley. I wanted to move out of Arizona. I hated it here. I was miserable. <laughs> and uh, Ryan drug me out here because he grew up here and you know, I, I actually really liked it. People were really kind to one another and loyal and just, you know, we left our garage door open and our neighbors would come tell us. It was something I hadn't experienced before because it, it's not like that in Ahwatukee. Yeah. And um, those east siders aren't nearly as cool as our west siders. <laughs> I think this would be like a, a west side story. It's, uh, like the, it's like the sharks and the jets. The right. The jets. Everybody starts <laughs> snapping. <laughs> I don't have, I, brought, I didn't bring my shit with me. This is a different kind of party. Oh, oh no. Uh, I, I feel like I need to cut somebody now. When I crossed the I 17, I, I don't have any new bullet wounds to speak of. No, um, but it's, it's that middle ground. We should all just like band together the west side and the east side versus the central side. See, I'm down. Let's right. do it. I'm cool with that. I say we all fight Tucson, except for JP. He's cool. All right. <laughs> Um, Sold. Yes, for sure. (laughs) But yeah, the city of Avondale has been so supportive from the very, very beginning. Anything that we've ever needed, they have gotten behind us in every way possible. Um, Of course, you know, within any legal reasoning, but I could not be more grateful to live here and to be open here and to run a business here. I have not ever met anybody who's involved in politics and the government who I feel is as genuine and um, as supportive as, as the city of Avondale has been for us. So, so shout out to the city of Avondale. Mm-hmm. Listen to this podcast. Doing it right. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> is anybody on the, the feed asking any questions there? Uh, no, people in? are just like basically saying hi. People are, people people are joining and dumping. And waving. Yeah, they're like Those jerks. a lot of hit and runs. It's all good. We get, to the, we get to the point of you guys actually opening the doors. Right. What was going through your mind? What were some of the feelings of actually falling <laughs> into that point of being like, the doors are opening. We have people. Oh, man. After the abject terror. I, I was right, right. say. <laughs> right. As you push that down, <laughs> way, way deep down, uh, and people are actually coming in and, and buying your beer. We had originally intended for both of us to remain at our full-time jobs for a time while right. we got started because... Um, and I know Ryan sort of vaguely mentioned this, but we're pretty much entirely self-funded. We had a very, very, very small investor at the very beginning who we've since bought out. We are 100% self-owned, no bank loans, no investors. Very cool. This nice. was our savings. This was our entire life. Indie beer. Yes. 
And when he realized he could not sustain the brewery and his full-time job and had to make the decision to leave his full-time job, that was probably one of the most terrifying decisions we've had to make yet. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I can't. Yeah, that's tough. It's tough going from yeah. <laughs> like the security, right, of having a job and a, a, a paycheck every week and then having, to like, it's a little unknown, right? I mean, you just don't know what's going to happen, so. That whole dual income, no kids thing was great. Yeah, it was really yeah. nice. Yeah, I imagine. Uh, I haven't had a real vacation in three and a half years. <laughs> I took you to Vegas all fancy last year. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> those we two even days. flew on one of those aeroplanes I hear so much about. Boom. Uh-huh. Um, do, do you want to tell them what happened on the aeroplane when we tried to come home? We almost died. <laughs> no. <laughs> Which was it? Did we go through Spirit or was it the other? Um, we went through another unnamed airline because I don't want to get sued No, yeah, slander. you're right. You're right. Sorry. <laughs> but is it, is it a slander if it actually did happen? I don't know. I'm just but no, saying, please don't. Yeah, plane was making crazy noises. Thought I was gonna die. It was great. <laughs> it, yeah, you know, planes are one of those situations where no matter what happens, you you, you can't freak out because you can't do anything, right? You can't yeah. like go out there and like hit the freaking engine with a hammer or something. There's nothing you can do. You're literally completely like it's I helpless. To be a plane mechanic. Yeah, <laughs> it's like cool. No, nope. just slow down. I'm going on the wing. It'll be okay. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Is this door just open? Was this just that lever? It's weird. No, yeah, I, there's I something on the wing. Yeah, yeah you're, you're <laughs> never going out there. There's nothing you can do. I'm sorry. But no, Ryan worst. leaving his job was pretty terrifying. That was that was a big step, and I think that was probably one of the moments where it felt the most real. Like, holy yeah. crap, we're doing this. Are we yeah. really doing this? But then as soon as the doors open and pe- the people start coming, and then I mean, it was cr- so the first day um, that we opened to the general public, I pretty much. Um, I was working that day, and it's like, you know what? Let me just make a tiny little post. Um, It was on a Friday, so it was one of those. I just made a little post on Facebook that was um, a black background, green text, uh, 8-bit font that just had our hours. And it's like, hey, uh, we're open starting today. And I posted it at like 10, 10 in the morning. Okay. Come in here at about 3.50, 10 minutes before open. Everything was already kind of set up, and it's like, all right, you know, this way we'll get to have a nice, calm start to everything. It's like... I posted it on our Facebook page a little earlier. A little soft Nothing open. Nothing to worry about. <laughs> I walk in the back door, and as soon as the back door opens, I see a line wrapping around the two windows in the front and kind of realize, oh, crap. <laughs> Christina immediately gets a call. There's a whole bunch of people outside. You need to get here as fast as you can. <laughs> uh, open the doors, and within five minutes the whole place was full and the surprising thing for me is like i expected i'd open the doors and if we were going to be full at all i thought it was going to be a bunch of geeks nerds gamers i mean it's like oh i'm gonna open this and it's gonna be all my people there were two people in here that were under 60 (laughs) and one of them is now christina's best friend the other one is my buddy that's opening a brewery or a meadery. Oh, nice. And they you, were the only you, two. You could say what it is if, if they know the name of it. Um, it'll be the Feather and Scale meadery. Oh, okay. So nice. keep an eye out for that. Very nice. Should be good stuff. She knows the name. I can't remember it. Sorry. You can say the name <laughs> if you want. Uh, it will be. No. Um, You're like my wife. I don't remember anything like number wise. And I was sort of like, uh, That's wife? 100% yes. why I'm here is to mm. remember things for him. Thanks. Man. And a poor beer when I'm sick. Right, that too. Yeah, beautiful. No, uh, that's a thing. Wait, hold on a second. That's a thing. <laughs> Call you my wife. Tell him the, the very first soft opening. What what day was that again? Anniversary. Yeah, <laughs> our wedding anniversary. I spent pouring beer for all of our friends and family. Made no money on it <laughs> whatsoever. So is that why it's called final anniversary? <laughs> Because it might have been the final anniversary you guys ever had. Ooh. It was this close, I can tell you. <laughs> Feel free to laugh for like two minutes about that joke, too. It's no problem. I'll take it. I'll take it where I can get it. A moment passed. Yeah. Ah, damn it. Can I, I, I got to give a shout out to one of our customers. It was one of my favorite jokes I've heard in a while. So this year is going to be our third anniversary. Right. Um, so it's final anniversary three, naturally. And it's rare that anybody catches me off guard anymore because I usually hear the same thing about a hundred times a day. And this guy's like, so final anniversary three, right? I was like, yeah. He's like, so in Japan it's six, right? I lost my mind. It was the funniest thing I'd heard in a mile. (laughs) It was great. (laughs) I love our customers so much. That's awesome. 
Well, does everybody, I mean, you just got a, new, a, a, a full beer. Does anybody else need kind of a, uh, should we take a little break real quick and uh, get some more beers for everybody else? I'm getting low. Absolutely. Yeah, quick break. Sounds good. We'll see you guys in a little bit. Cool. All right, we are back. What's next, Chris? Rapid round time. Ooh. All right, you want to get in the rapid round? Let's do the rapid round. The, 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 the rapid, not so rapid round? The not so rapid, rapid round. It's I'm going to do the first ever really rapid, rapid round. Bring Excellent. It. I love it. The first rapid, rapid round. <laughs> All right, so. Rapidly. <laughs> It's taking too long. Come on, knock these so, out. Yeah, no, no, no. We, we, should, we should already be into this. <laughs> it's, it's rapid for you, not for me. I don't know. Who. This is uh, costing me Monster yeah. Hunter time now. We're on the clock. Oh, shit. Yeah. All right, sorry. Oh, <laughs> sorry. E- uh, awkward. Uh, what, what was the beer that got you into craft beer? The most uh, podcasty of all craft beer podcasts. Stone's Imperial Russian Stout. Guys. Nice. The Sublimely Self-Righteous? No, they're actual Imperial The, the Imperial? Oh, okay. Yeah, uh, go figure. Yeah. Stones Ruination. Oh, damn. All right. Well, that's all right. I like tops right off the bat. I don't Mission's know what's good. wrong with me. These are good. Okay. <laughs> We're already yeah. off to a great start. Uh, full disclosure, my son's name is Stone. So I'm also <laughs> wearing, a stone, wearing a stone shirt. Yeah, I'm also wearing a stone shirt. <laughs> yes, I, yes, it's for that reason. I just want to throw this out there. We had Stone's Gargoyle on our wedding cake. Ryan had Stone Bottle Caps as his uh, cufflinks for our wedding. Beautiful. And uh, we have... A signed photo of him that Stone posted on their wall for his birthday one year when I reached out to their marketing team. Perfect. Uh, it was Congratulations. wonderfully embarrassing. Thank so, uh, yeah. I'll, I'll say this: my son's not named after the brewery, but he's also not not named after the brewery. That's fair. <laughs> so, whatever. Uh-huh. Uh, wh- what is your moped beer, aka your guilty pleasure beer? I don't know that I have a guilty pleasure beer, to be honest. All right. I don't feel guilty drinking beer. No, just anything. That's fine. But that's actually a very <laughs> normal answer. A lot of people say that. They're like, eh, fuck it. I'll just drink a beer I want. Ooh, I know. Kilt Lifter. Ooh. Yeah. At this time point, yeah, it kind of is, right? Yeah. Suck Except it for he peaks. doesn't actually drink that. <laughs> I can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> See, it's, it's an oxymoron yes. because... If it's actually beer, there's no guilty pleasure behind it. If it's not beer and you're talking about things like Bud Light, then there's certainly some guilt, but it's not beer, therefore it's it's not, not guilty pleasure beer right. specifically. Well, I'm not gonna agree with that question, so thank you. All right. <laughs> it's true. Yeah, all right. Uh, what is your deathbed beer? And if you want to bring it to the next level, uh, what is a food pairing you would pair with it? Like if you're on death row and they're like last meal, last beer, what do you want? Anything in the world, anytime, whatever. That was tough. I think I'd go out with a Hops Essence Creed. I know it's our own beer, and I'm probably not supposed to say it, but as I was telling you off the no. mic, I absolutely love that beer, and it's almost all I drink. And I have, a, that's what, I got a refill of that. I mean, he brewed it for himself, I mean, let's be honest. So. <laughs> Thank you. Right? It's, for me, God, that's so hard, because, so... As far as one of our beers go, um, when Ryan told me he was going to spend our life savings to open a brewery, <laughs> my response was, yeah, okay, but I want a peach IPA with mosaic hops. Wow, That's wow. the deal. Wow. That's it. That's so easy. Yeah. yeah. So every summer, Princess comes out. It is a peach IPA with mosaic hops. <laughs> and it's it's funny how exactly what I asked for, you know, enough peach flavor to know I'm drinking a peach beer, but enough hop that it's still an IPA is exactly what I got. So I almost want to go with that. But also, if I'm not looking at 8-Bit, I love the brewery's Black Tuesday. I love That's that true. beer so much. Damn. I'm a sucker. I'm- I feel so. I'm not even gonna say it now. I actually have two bottles at home. We have a few. Do you have two? Cool. Yeah. I don't feel bad that I didn't bring any. Cause... We'll go with. We'll go with two. Yeah. Two. They had a public sale. Why would you not buy more? Yeah. Yeah. And also, the first time I tried it was out of the barrel directly. Oh, damn. So nice. While I was yeah. here slaving away I'm until sorry. midnight to I'm open sorry. a brewery, after that. being sworn because we had friends that were gonna open a bottle. She made me swear that I would not drink that with them nope. until she got home. They reached out. They're like, hey, we know you've had a long day. You want to crack that Black Tuesday? No, no. Christina's not here. She's at the brewery drinking it out of the barrel. <laughs> <laughs> it would have been rude to say no. 
<laughs> yeah, but you can't really say <laughs> no when somebody pours you like some beer. I mean, at the and place Ryan, where Ryan made. gets pictures of Christina doing a keg stand a on a Black Tuesday barrel. <laughs> saying I wouldn't do that. <laughs> Wait, is that a keg stand? Damn it. <laughs> so have you had chocolate rain then? Yeah. <laughs> all right, just making sure. I've got a bottle or two, but I don't think I've ever cracked them. Yeah, all right. I got spoiled. What, so They're really good. When I was there, I was there for the Star Wars Half Marathon weekend. Name and dropping. I, I hold on, let me pick that up for you real quick. <laughs> all right, cool. my keep fault... Um, I was there with a friend, uh, so we were all, there were a few of us all rooming together, and, and I was supposed to go with a few friends, they bailed on me, we had, I had the room, so I invited a couple people from the online running community, hey, does anybody still need a room, so on and so forth. Um, one of the women who stayed with me, her name is Audra, and she's actually uh, runs a business in craft beer. She does craft beer, um, like accounting and financing. It's called um, Brewed by Her Ledger. It's she's fantastic. She's incredible. She's actually the uh, treasurer for the Pink Boot Society. Oh, cool. Um, now she wasn't then, but so we're sitting in this room together and realize we both work in the beer industry. We both love craft beer, so we're like, dude, we need to go to a brewery. Right. <laughs> so of course we went to the brewery. And as we're sitting there, um, I'm trying to show our other friend who has no idea anything related to beer is about. And um, this guy came up to tell us, hey, you know, even if you're sitting at the bar, you still have to wait in line to order, so on and so forth. She's like, oh, yeah, yeah, no, I know. We're just trying to help our friend. We, we're both in the beer industry. And he goes, oh, that's cool. And she's like, yeah, she's one of the owners of 8 Bidale Works. We hadn't even opened yet at this point. And this dude, he's from Arizona. He's like, I know them. I've heard of them. And so suddenly we got a super awesome private tour. I got to try whatever beers I wanted. It was kind of amazing. I hope I'm not getting anyone in trouble. No, it's all right. Late, late, one of the other questions was, what was your, your best beer geek out moments that you opened a brewery? So you kind of actually already filled that. Like, check that yeah. box that we haven't even go into that <laughs> no, anymore. No, that was so. incredible. Thank you. That's a great story. That's, it's one of those things, like you said, you can't say no to that. You really, right. I mean, when they're like, yeah, you want to go try less rare beer that nobody's ever tried yet? You want to? Yeah. Try? Yeah. I guess I'm, I mean, I, <clears throat> okay. It's like the greatest thing. And I mean, we, we say it, I've said it on the show to where people are probably like, oh my God, shut up already. But you know, around here, we, we always see the hashtag, you know, beer people are the best people. Mm -hmm. And it's so it true. It, it's not just a hashtag. You know, we did a quick road trip to San Diego to hit a bunch of the San Diego breweries that we had wanted to go to just for, I mean, we didn't go to podcasts. We didn't go to, you know, advertise. We didn't go to like plug the show. We're just like going. But, you know, we stopped at Toolbox and, you know, this is just natural conversation. It's like, hey, you know, we're, we're, we do a podcast in Arizona and we've heard about your stuff. We hear it's amazing. And then pretty much everywhere we went, the two days we were there, it's like, you know, without even asking or knowing it was coming, you, you get the check and it's a lot lower than you expect. Mm -hmm. And you see industry discount on there and it's like. I didn't even mean to do that. It's just like, yeah, we're, we're a bunch of lame podcasters from Phoenix that drove out to San Diego to drink beer. And I mean, they treated us like royalty. It was amazing. Nice. We're so lucky to be involved in an industry that is not only so collaborative and supportive of one another, but that is so genu genuinely concerned with the happiness and well-being of other people in this industry and, and with the community around us. I mean, I've seen just some of the most beautiful things that, that make me smile, you know, feel good moments related to beer because of the people who build these breweries and who run these breweries. And I am so grateful that we get to be a part of that. Like right. it blows me away every single day. Yeah. Arizona yeah. beer community is really amazing. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely yeah. amazing. So the next question on this uh, rapid round is, what is a beer that you would decline under any circumstance? Like you were at like a barbecue or somebody was like, hey, man, I got something that's cool. You want one of these? And they, and you're like, nope, I'm, I'll just drink water. I'm good. Bud Light. Bud Light. Bud Light. Oh, right. 100%. What about Bud Light Lime? You guys would drink that, though? <laughs> Can I amend anything. my answer to say anything brewed by Budweiser? <laughs> but Bud Light, oh, little anything star. Anything brewed by InBev. Yes. Ah, okay. Andy. Boom. Yeah, I I'm have gonna... I have no shame anymore. I I used to be very supportive of breweries making their own decisions, but uh, when when breweries start attacking other breweries, then I am no longer interested in what you have to offer me. All right, agreed. All right, so one thing that should never be in a beer. There's or, no such thing. Really? Okay. I put, put garlic in a beer. Yeah. I. Well, so there's. 
talked about this with the shop. There's a new thing going around that people are putting glitter in beer. Oh, so no. should that be in beer? That should be in beer about as much as haze should be in beer. So why was, not? Let's all jump I mean, on fast. I was going to say my thing that you should never put in beer is flour. So okay. to all the breweries who think adding flour to your beer to make it hazy so it sells. Air, air quotes. Everybody on the live stream can see me doing air quotes. Like right. This. Air quotes. Uh, air that quotes. is 100%. Flour is not an ingredient in beer, period. Yeah. Yeah. I agree with that. Beer's close enough to bread as it is. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, what is your favorite place to have a beer? And it could be here. It could be a state. It could be a state of mind. Wherever. It doesn't make a difference. What is your favorite place to actually have a nice craft beer? It used to be the uh, Stone Gardens. They've made a lot of changes the past couple of years. I don't feel like the beer is quite the same as it used to be. That was my old one. Nowadays, honestly, just being able to sit at home with a beer is great. It's relax, yeah. Yeah, I spend so little time on my couch anymore <laughs> that those few rare moments, You're like, yes. they're pretty valuable anymore. Very cool. Uh, and then the last oh, one is... And Black Friday here. The um, only day that we both come here and drink the entire day. Pretty sweet time to have a beer. If That's you're cool. ever curious about how Ryan and Christina act completely plastered... <laughs> <laughs> come, come at like four o'clock. When do you guys open? Four? Six a.m. You been at six? A. Oh god, come at noon. No. <laughs> I've, I've, I've tried to give you a little bit of. I, I will say it's almost disappointing. We didn't. We didn't even really. Neither of us walked away feeling like any kind of serious buzz or anything. More than it was just like we're full. That happened at GABF too. Your, it was disappointing. Your tolerance is way too high. I know. I have a problem. <laughs> Just do a keto for a is week it, and then you'll Is it a go. problem or is it a gift? <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> I mean, we're Irish. We're, we're, we both have nice Irish backgrounds. I would yes, say we just excellent. we put them to good use. That's yes. Anywhere so I have I would a like game to, I would like to see the entire progression. So I'd be a six AM guy. Yeah. Got to hear when open. Oh yeah. That Got way you don't miss trucks. any of the cool beers. Right. I always feel like it's a it's not a sprint. It's a marathon. So you kind of kind of. Bingo. Drink some beers, eat some food, drink some beers, munch on something. Eat some, drink some I've run a marathon. I can attest to that. Wow. Wear a diaper the whole time. That's all pretty it's much the same really exactly. not a bad plan. <laughs> yeah, I mean. It saves you a lot of time and effort at mile 20. No. <laughs> yeah, yeah um, right. <laughs> but seriously, Black Friday is so much fun because we do a Black Mage Tap takeover. We do a bunch of variants of our Black Mage Stout. I think my favorite last year was probably the... German chocolate cake version or the gingerbread version. Both are really good. Uh, ginger snaps. Right, ginger snaps. Mm. Mm. <laughs> I see what you did it's there. It's a lot of fun. But yeah, we sit down, we make our staff work, um, and we drink. Slave drivers. I know, we're terrible people. <laughs> yeah. You seem like it. This podcast is over. <laughs> we're done talking. <laughs> oh, wait. <you> guys. <laughs> <laughs> Out. <laughs> So the last question in the rapid round is, uh, air quotes again, people that listen to the podcast, not the live feed. Uh, what is the next big trend in craft beer? What do you guys think it is? Or what would you like it to be? Actually, is another thing too, right? I think it'd be interesting to see more savory beers. Okay. Like, I just feel like there's, I mean, there's, you know, obviously a lot going on in the fruit and in the dessert style. Ryan's garlic goes was actually really good. I like how she's like, she's like, it's like almost like pains you to say that. It looks no, like no. You, you're like, oh, it was actually really good. It, it surprised me. I told him not to do it. Right. Okay. I, I really did. I said, that is a terrible plan. Please do not put garlic in a beer. And he did it anyways. Um, she left me here unattended. Yeah. <laughs> then it was your fault, I guess. I have a tendency to do that when I have to work to pay our bills. Nah, worst. Bad plan. Um, but it surprised me. It was really good. So I think, you know, I've had a couple here and there, like a, a pizza beer and one that tasted like salsa. And it was just really unique and interesting. So I, I'd be curious to see more of those if they could be Ch done. Chicken well. and waffles. Chicken and waffles. Oh, yeah. I feel like that's been done. If it doesn't, if it hasn't, we it needs to be. We talked about it. Remember when everybody was wondering what chicken kicker was? True. Well, who is it? Who who did the um, who did the fried chicken beer? Is it? It wasn't tired hands. Uh, other, it was the other half. Other they, half. They other the half did the fried chicken beer. Yeah. Really, it was like poured like a plate of Chick Fil A nuggets into a. It was just yeah. a lot of fried yeah. chicken. Ryan. 
<laughs> Ryan has this reputation of being something of a mad scientist to the point where we released a porter called Chicken Kicker. And the reference, of course, comes from Zelda Ocarina of Time, where you go and you kick the chickens and then they all attack you because you have to kick the chickens. It's just a rite of passage. Uh, and in uh, Fable as well. You kick chickens in Fable? <laughs> I think yes. you can, actually, yeah. yes. But... Um, we put it, so we have a section on our, our board where we write the loading beers, which are the things that are currently in progress, and we wrote Chicken Kicker, and, and people were like, what the hell is Chicken Kicker? Are you guys doing a fried chicken beer? Like, this was what people genuinely thought we were doing because they know nothing is safe here. <laughs> nothing <Right>. is sacred. <laughs> See, this is where my wife hates me, and I love doing it. So my mom made me this way. But I would fuck with people. I would be like, oh, yeah, it's going to be tons of chicken in there. It's going to be like, oh, I would no. just like totally just like feed into that, like belief of whatever they thought, and then just mess with them as much as possible and see we how far. We started telling people all kinds of crazy stuff. Oh, yeah. How, how far can I take this this white lie as much as possible? <laughs> it was <laughs> you know? fun. Yeah. Just to mess with people. Yeah. I don't, really know. I don't know what other trends. I mean, the, the, I've been tagged in so many of the posts about the glitter beer lately. Yeah, it's kind of ridiculous. Uh, I, we've heard loggers at some, at some point. Loggers kind of are kind of making a comeback, supposedly. Maybe I, I see Arizona. maybe like some hopped loggers being a thing. HBL's, I think that could be. I love a good uh, hoppy lager when it's like a lot of hops, almost to the point where it tastes like you know a pale ale. So it's fine. Right. So you're not drinking a lager anymore. Exactly. Yeah. You know. And I don't know. I I don't know that I want to see a fad. It's kind of funny because I started as a home brewer, but depending on the fad, they can really get under my skin as far as like. Um, I don't hide my distaste for hazy IPAs whatsoever. And I've had one or two really good ones out there. Um, I will say probably the best ones I've had have been from uh, Borderlands. Okay. I mean, mm-hmm. I, it tastes like I'm chewing on a mouthful of hops, and it's great. Right. But um, those ones bug me so much because people will just they'll look at the beer, and because they see it's hazy, they have already decided that it's good. Right. And I mean, kind of what your point to the flower. People like add it just for the, the appearance. It doesn't make it, it doesn't no. add anything to the flavor of the beer, right? Which is. So I, I really real. just want people to drink beer to drink beer. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I love to throw fun stuff in there and that, that's, that's great. It's one of those, you know, people can look at it and go, oh, wow, I love cinnamon rolls. What happens if I drink a beer he threw cinnamon rolls into? Or, right. You know, just really going out there and having fun with the beer. I guess that's the fad I'd like to see is brewers going out there and experimenting and playing with the beer and Mm -hmm. having fun with it because beer is supposed to be fun. I agree. Yeah. I mean, we've both lectured people here and there at the bar who've said, why don't you guys do a hazy IPA? Please do a hazy IPA. And Ryan and I both have that same reservation where it's gotten to the point where there are breweries that will exploit the trend and make bad beer, but make it hazy and know it's going to sell anyways. And... It's disappointing as, as a brewery owner to see people drinking based on a description instead of, you know, really experimenting and enjoying flavor and really looking right. critically at what they're drinking. <clears throat> well, we, we talked about it. Like, it's, it's one of those things where, you know, beers like that and people that make those kind of beers, you can fool, fool me once, right? Like, you, right. I'll, like I'll, it's like, cool. I, we, all, all cards on the table, we like hazy beers. We like juicy IPAs. But... You have to make good ones. And like you said, right. Borderlands is doing really good. Polo oh, does some really good fucking hazy beers, too. Yeah. But there's other there people that make them, and you're like, this looks hazy. It does not taste hazy. It doesn't make, it's not juicy. It's not what it's supposed to be. It's literally just by appearance only. It's cloudy. So fool me once, but other than that, I'm not going to buy that beer again from you. I'm not going to buy any more beers when you say that because, mm-hmm. you know, that's just how it works. But I'm going to make a hazy, glitter-filled pastry stout. <laughs> <laughs> With zero IBUs. Done. I think, wow. I think part of my issue is when it comes to consumer misinformation, when I feel like you're right. misrepresenting the product. So when breweries are out there saying, oh, it's hazy because it's unfiltered. Okay, well, great. So are mine, but they're perfectly clear. Filtration right. has nothing to do with it. So you're... It's gravity. At that, exactly. There, yeah. there are so many reasons a beer could or could not be hazy. And when you're out there misrepresenting why it works that way, just because you know you can make a buck on it, when in turn, you know, maybe you just... Oh, I forgot to put my Whirlflock talents in, or <laughs> I didn't let it crash long enough. Right. It, it's almost offensive when you're sitting here saying, oh, well, this is how beer works when it's not. Right. And then consumers who don't know any better are out there like, oh, but it's hazy, so it's got to be good. That's the thing right now. 
Um, and that's not to say that there aren't good hazy IPAs. I am 100% down for, you know, a good solid Northeast IPA. If you've got great juicy hot flavor, that's fantastic. Mm. I prefer a West Coast style, but I'm not opposed <laughs> to a good Northeaster. I, I think it would be just nice, kind of like Ryan said, to see a beer judge in and of itself as opposed to based on on what some crazy trend is. Yeah. No, that makes sense. And I, like I said, it's one of those things where, yeah, I mean... If it's not, at least about flour again, it's one of those things where if it's not adding flavor to the beer, mm-hmm. it shouldn't be in the beer. And if 100%. you're doing it for just, you know, marketing value or you know, to make it a style that people want because it's hot, then yeah, I want nothing to do with it either. I mean, it's, yeah. it's the beer's got to taste good and I got to enjoy drinking the beer before, you know, I'll drink it anymore. Yeah. So I love oh. glitter a lot. Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> it is craft herpes and I fully subscribe <laughs> to the awesomeness that is glitter, but I don't know that I want it in my beer. You know, we kind of talked about it. And I, I just, yeah. I mean, I have other reservations too. The whole concept of women in beer and, you know, glitter being somehow representative of that is just yeah. frustrating. No, don't like that. And that was, I saw that. And I was just like, that's pretty presumptuous of people to be like, yeah, no, nope, don't like it. Not yeah. a big fan of that. <laughs> that's not cool. I'll put uh, it in mana potion. There you make it sparkle. There you go. <laughs> yeah, right. But see, then it makes sense. <laughs> right? There you go. Uh, so, actually, I have... So, done with the rapid round. So, thank you for doing the rapid round. Yay. I'm sorry I and ruined the rapid done part. In 10 or 12 minutes? Yeah, you know, it was, it was, it was, it was fairly rapid. rapid. That was, that was my fault. Rapid-ish. <laughs> the rapid-ish round. You know, but it's That's funny. what you should call it. We love... Yeah. <laughs> ish. Ooh. Trademark. Trademark. <laughs> Hashtag trademark. Uh, so I actually have a ton of random questions. I don't know if Jeff actually has any more questions. Uh, but how you guys got started or anything like that. I have or, a bunch of questions. I mean, yeah. just, just, I mean, where do we start? I mean, we just Star go. Star Wars is better than Star Trek. My favorite game ever is Monster Hunter. Uh, I well, love damn, IPAs and stouts. And yeah, that's, those are the key ones. That normally do you like, out. do you like walkers, walkers on the beach too? <laughs> What's a beach? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A virtual beach. I think you had like a VR, like, and there's seagulls maybe flying around. Oh, the end. I think the most obvious question is, I mean, you guys are kind of known for the infusions you do. And, like, not not to compare you to hipsters, but you guys were kind of doing the infusions where, before infusions were cool. And I think <laughs> the, the one that stands out to me, the one I think of every time, the one I keep talking about, even though it's been years since I had it, as you guys did, it was, I believe it was the Hef is a Lie and it was like the banana split oh, version yeah. of that. And it's like, I come in here, you know, we drive all the way out here from the east side and it's like, I have to have this beer. And... You know, you, you see you guys posting on Facebook. You see people talking about it. It's like, okay, banana split. And, you know, you expect banana, like a banana split is like vanilla ice cream. And it's usually got like chocolate and strawberry and bananas in there. And you guys nailed every single one of those flavors individually <laughs> in that beer. And it blew my freaking mind. So I've, I've had not... Tons of your infusions, but the ones that I've had just like blow me away because I mean, you you still your beer still tastes like beer, but you have like you nail all these nuances of these infusions you do. So kind of like what inspires you? Um, is there any kind of crazy magic you do? I mean, where do you come up with your ideas? How do you do your infusions? How do you do go? That, how do you do that voodoo that you do? <laughs> so before he speaks, I'm gonna let Ryan explain, but I just I just want to say. You know, since I'm not Ryan, I, I'm really proud of him. He has a crazy good palate, and he comes up with the weirdest things I've ever heard of in my life and somehow always makes them work. He's really, really talented in that way, and he's too humble to, to say that, but I want to say that because it is, it's true. Like, he does the most Lies incredible things well, yeah. with beer. <laughs> and again, I mean, w- without, without slagging you guys, because I, I totally... It, I read about a lot of these beers you guys are doing and it's like that should be a hot mess and it <laughs> never is they're all incredible infusions like every single beer I've had from you guys like with you know in, infuse or not has been really awesome so it's not just a gimmick so with a lot of that I mean honestly part of it is and I was showing your buddy uh, a little bit earlier 
Um, a big part of it is the kegs. It's me. So um, I went and picked up some side bun kegs from Pueblo Vida down in Tucson. They had ordered more than they needed. And those things work just like a regular sonky keg. Um, they've got all the regular attachments, that sort of thing. But they've got a hole in the side of them. So pretty much I can take a muslin bag and shove anything I want into the side of that keg to make it taste like that and then seal it all up. Um, that goes into the beer once it's cold, carbonated, and fully finished. So it's not like a cask where you're, you know, you just kind of have to leave it. And once you open it, you have 24 hours and you hope stuff worked or some of the sugars fermented out or there were more sugars than you thought. Um, so those kegs really help with a lot of that. Um, the banana split one, you know, that was one where the uh, the Hefezalai already has a strong banana pudding flavor, which really helps. And with that, I just kind of went, it's like, okay, what else goes into a banana split? So I was thinking maraschino cherry and chocolate, um, the vanilla ice cream, like you said. So that was one of those. I went out and got a bunch of vanilla beans. I got like five or eight pounds of maraschino cherries and a couple pounds of chocolate. Ran those cherries through a food processor, dumped the juice, the cherry chunks, everything straight into the keg, yes. piled the chocolate in there, piled the vanilla in there. So the reason a lot of the times it tastes like that stuff is that's what I put in there. It was incredible. Cause I, and again, you know, it's, it's one of those things you're like, okay, banana split, whatever. And then you drink it and it, it's all those things, you know, and it's not like an assault of like, oh, it's just this big banana splitty mess. It's like, you know, you, you get like those hints of chocolate and the cherry, the vanilla. And I can't explain the other way that it, it was freaking amazing. And it blows my mind still thinking about it to this day. We did a, we did beer school 5.0 at Helton, and then we did an event during beer week here as well, where we allowed people to hack their own beer. We call our infusions hacked beers, by the way. Which, by the way, the people we talked to that went to, I was bummed I didn't get to that because, again, I'm so in awe of your infusions. I, I, I can't think of anyone we know of that went to that beer school that wasn't like 8 bits whole infusion class was freaking incredible. Yeah, that was the best. Awesome. That was the highlight of their trip or their, their school. That that means a lot. We really appreciate it. But yeah, so we did we did events where we basically kind of let people in on the secret. We used French presses and let them do exactly what we do just on a smaller scale. I mean, we really do kind of the same thing as exactly what we taught at beer school. We let people pick whatever ingredients they thought might go together. We used a French press. We put it in the beer, let them drink it, and decide what they thought of it. And, you know, we made a point to bring some things that were a little weird, a little off the wall, and, and said, you know, just because we have it doesn't mean it belongs in a beer, but right. that's that's your call. And it was so exciting for us to see other people being so creative because right. that's what we thrive on. You know, Ryan is an artist as much as he is a scientist in the brewery and it was really great to let other people experience that same process and really just kind of have fun with it and um you know his mom cooked a lot when he was growing up so he grew up with kind of a, a good palate and learned certain things that go together and certain things that don't and he's been able to apply it to beer and it's been amazing and it was a lot of fun to watch other people do the same thing um but what she's not telling everybody is i'm really just a kid with add a super short attention span and I get bored with my beer so I have to throw weird crap in there. Ooh, squirrel. <laughs> There's that too. <laughs> Ooh, shiny. Just the shiny. Well, it's working. I'll, yeah, I'll tell you that right now. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> so, uh, I have a bunch of random uh, beer slash video game questions we can ask you guys. So, do it. I don't know if you guys want to get another beer and then come back and do that or if you actually want to go right into it. Brian, you still good? I think I'm ready to go into it. All right, let's do this let's then. Do it. Uh, if you could drink a beer with any video game, char video game character, who would it be? Christina's would be Ezio, and then she'd <laughs> cheat on me and leave me for him wow. because Ooh. he's a suave, suave, blanky, blanky. <laughs> yeah, I know we can swear on this, but my mom's probably going to listen to it, so I'm on my what, best behavior. What happens if he hugs you and he stabs you accidentally with his knife in his hand? Like, he wouldn't. He's skilled. Oh. He knows what he's doing. <laughs> I'm, pretty, I'm, I'm pretty sure they call that karma. <laughs> He's like caresses your face and he cups your ear off. You're like, right. no, oh, no. I mean, the moment was lost. Yeah, it would be Ezio. He's not lying. He, he, right. he caressed me softly and then shanked me by accident. Oh, yeah, you're right. Down to those hidden blades. <laughs> so many bad puns. I'm just going to let them lie. <laughs> <laughs> you, 
Yours right? What would yours be? Man. It actually might be the save one or same one. You want to be Ezio too? You want to go drink with Ezio? All right. I mean, dude was dripping with personality. I, Who doesn't want to go drink beer dude. with a suave Italian? <laughs> that could, I mean, he swan dives on things too, so he's kind of a, a base jumper, right? Hey, he's exciting. He's they deliver the check. The guy jumps off a building, lands in a bale of hay, and no one ever sees him again. <laughs> You're like, uh. he's the most influential assassin of all time. So as long as we say we want to drink a beer with him, we're not going right. to die. <laughs> Yeah, but the problem is that he'd jump off the, the thing and into the hay, and then you'd be like, I guess I'm paying for this yeah. round of drinks, I guess, is me. All right. Hey, he survived. You can make the jump, too. That's true. That's true. <laughs> he tested it for you. It's okay. <laughs> is that what he's... <laughs> I mean, I'm not skilled at his assassin or anything, but I'll try it. Let's do this. There's I may no not way you can land it, but I could belly flop into the hay. All right. I'm in. Jeff, who would, who would yours be? We haven't I'm asked in. this question before, so this is really... I'm super old school, so it'd have to be Roger Wilco, because that guy's a goof before he's drunk, and then you could probably skip out on the bill real easy with that guy, and, you know, he, guy's a janitor. Come on. I see where your priorities lie. <laughs> <laughs> We've heard skip out a whole bunch. Yeah. I'm... Hey, John, <laughs> you've got a credit card from these two, right? <laughs> mm. All right. <laughs> uh, oh no. Uh, uh, I'd say Donkey Kong. Like, really? Like, yeah, like, because he was in. He drives a cart. He actually throws barrels. I mean, come on, it's hey. good times. He's who knows what's in those barrels. <laughs> he'd he'd That's love true. that. He'd we love that banana that. split. <laughs> he would have. Man, hey, Donkey Kong would tear that up. with his cart, and then he'd be pissed off. So, on that note, you may notice on the uh, loading for the barrels. Uh, she just wrote the Hef is a lie. We're probably going to call it Kong. There's a bunch of the Hef is a lie, which is that same banana beer sitting in rum barrels right now. Oh, my God. That may or may not be going to be infused with a bunch of uh, vanilla and cinnamon to turn it into a banana's foster beer that we will be bottling. Oh, just my goodness. Jeff went from 10 to midnight. Yeah, 10. Yeah, yeah. Watch him tip, tip the table over. Good Lord. Oh, no. All right. So, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm going. I am definitely going to make that anniversary. <laughs> Yeah, it's a good time. So, we can do this one of two ways. Uh, I can, we can literally ask you to pair a, a beer style up with a style or genre of video games. Or I can give you a bunch of different beers, and you can actually tell me what genre goes with each one. Let's do that one. Yeah, second All right. one. All right, so double IPA. Assassin's Creed multiplayer because the drunker I got, the more deadly I was. Ooh. Solid, yeah. Hence right. the yeah. name Hop Assassin's Creed in our session IPA because irony is awesome. <laughs> this is double a tantra. Like that. Porter. Horror. Horror games like The Last of Us. Ooh, God. So, is that a horror game or just a very sad well, game? It's a horror game. It's also very depressing, but it's <laughs> a yes. super sad game. <laughs> Horizon Zero Dawn because it's all cold. I could see that too. Mm. Mm. Both are good. Both are good. Uh, Amber. Um, Call of Duty because everybody's doing it. <laughs> and I don't want to play either. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not terribly interesting. <laughs> now. It wasn't now it's not interesting. It was. Exactly. Before they got into like fours and fives and jetpacks and running on wall shit. Not a big fan. Kind of like Amber's. Yeah. <laughs> it, you, it was probably interesting at one point. It's just true. It's not, it's not 1995 anymore. All right. Uh, Russian Imperial Stout. Hmm. You see, and, and genre, by the way. So you can be like. You know. I was going to say a turn based JRPG. There we go. Wow. What was that game Metro where it's all like around Chernobyl? It's like a first person shooter. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Russian Imperial. It's like, oh no. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> do, 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 it looks like you had like an idea. No, like, no. Mm. I, I'm thinking kind of the same, like a good turn based game. That way you have all the time you need to think before you click that button. And you just yep. sip on that drink. That's oh, right. Yeah. Very nice. Uh, and uh, I do have a logger on here, but that's. Uh, first person shooter. Oh, okay. Wow. <laughs> In some high lifes and just freaking. FPS, hundred percent. All right, makes sense. With the exception of Overwatch, because it's actually interesting. 
Overwatch is kind of fun. I do like it. I do enjoy Overwatch. The loot system that was really that. It's gambling. It's really gambling. I'm a big gambler. Yeah, but all you're doing is gambling for skins for your dolly. Yeah, I know. It's just tough. It doesn't improve the game or detract from it. That's what I love They're about the Overwatch. They're the loot boxes I don't mind. Yeah, that is true. I don't get me wrong. I did, I did them. I did a lot of loot boxes. Don't get me wrong. I paid a lot of real money for when it's for pay that. to win loot boxes. Then it gets under my skin. Yeah, it's yeah. a little tough. 100%. Unless it's free to play, at which point you knew what you were in for when well, you signed and, up. And this is—I I think Jeff has the same mentality. Is like I, I always feel like a free to play game. Um, I don't mind paying more money for that kind of stuff when I would have paid that much money for the game anyways. Exactly. Yep. So I'm like, oh, 20 bucks, not a big deal. Exactly. I'll put, not a big deal. But you start getting like, oh, $70 on microtransactions. You're like, oh, this yeah. is tough. It's yeah, but tough. if I drop 60 bucks on a game and then they want me to drop another 40 for the expansion right. pack to get the rest of the game that's already on the CD, so like, and then they factor some loot boxes in there too to get even better, yeah, at that point, I'm just not going to buy your game. I mean... I would mentioned the game company. I think that does that a lot, but I don't want to get sued. The probably listen to the podcast anyway, so fuck up EA. That's what they do. That. <laughs> <laughs> they do that a lot. It seems like that's pretty much it. Yeah. Mm. Uh, have you guys ever heard of the uh, arcade game called Last Bar Fighter? No. no. Please tell me more. Ooh, so, this is going to be good. Uh, there's a company or there's a, a brewery <laughs> called Big Boss Brewing. They're in actually, I actually wrote down Raleigh, North Carolina. Uh, they actually have an arcade game that they built that allows you to put tokens in and then you actually play a flash-based game and you what? basically like, Street Fighter style, you know, fight versus another person and you have a fucking cup underneath and whoever wins gets their beer, beer filled. All right, that is the coolest thing I've ever heard of in link. my life. I have a YouTube link so you guys can watch the video on the, during the break. Sounds it's, like it's collaboration time. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Uh, when, it, when does North Carolina not suck? Like what time of year? Um, coming and that's up. not me bashing right. North Carolina. I've just never been. It's, it's well, we're uh, from Arizona. That's how it works. Is you, you don't go there in the cold months. North yeah, Carolina. You don't come here in the summer. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That was actually one of the places I planned to move when I left Arizona. So, um, the summer over there is not terrible. It's a little humid, but uh, spring. What What is this go. humid that you speak I know, of? I know, right? <laughs> yeah, right. Um, it's when the sweat doesn't evaporate <laughs> off of you it's, immediately. It's miserable. Ooh, September in the brew house. Right. <laughs> Precisely. There you go. No, I'm super down. North Carolina is fantastic. They're doing great things in their beer scene over there. Um, I, I, I think we need to have a chat. Let's make that happen. Because, yes, people. that game, they have a YouTube, I'll start the YouTube video in the break. Nice. It's do. pretty awesome. And it's I'm called The super- Last Bar Fighter. Hello. It's so many levels. It's it's epic. Let's make that movie again, right? They're doing a remake of that movie, supposedly still. I don't know. If, if, Name if, three movies they aren't doing a remake of. Uh, Aladdin, Aladdin 2, uh, Chris Jafar. Um, <laughs> I don't know. You're probably did wrong. Remake. Did you see the first episode of Star Wars Rebels? No, I haven't seen that. First episode of Star Wars Rebels, and they just finally wrapped up the entire season. It was pretty much the first five minutes was the first five minutes of Aladdin. They even called him a street rat, and I almost stopped watching. Because Star Wars Disney started showing real bad all of a sudden. <laughs> they, were, they were made in DuckTales, so I guess that makes sense. Uh, yeah, I'm a little disappointed. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I'm a huge Disney fan, but, I, you know, I like the OG. What can I say? Yes. We well, guys want to take a break now, and then we can come back and we can talk some uh, about some events coming up, and then what uh, what the future holds for you guys. Sounds good. Yeah, sounds yeah. good. That's what I do. Ain't nothing wrong with that. So what do we got? Uh so we are back. We're back. Yeah, that's how it works. Is podcasts are the best because you can just talk whenever you want. So you're back. It's amazing. Yeah, the power of editing is really nice sometimes. <laughs> we really need it a lot of the time. So thank you. Uh, no, I, I, I wanted to get into or at least talk about, you know, maybe some future plans for what you guys got going on, which you guys, you know, from if you guys think about expanding this place or I, so you guys are doing some cans here, stuff like that. Like, what do you guys plan on doing? What Where do you see 8-Bit in like, you know, five to 10 years kind of thing? Well, we know everybody on the east side of the valley is really dying for a tasting room. So yes. more than likely, we're going to open one in Verado just to go a little bit further west and piss everybody off. <laughs> nice. Wait, <laughs> wait, that's a city? <laughs> Actually, Verado, 
No, Ferrado is technically Buckeye. They just want to sound fancier than Buckeye. Fuck it, go to Quartzite. Let's go. Let's, let's keep going. It's located between between Klaatu and Nictu. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, we at this point we have no desire whatsoever to uh, try to open a second tasting room. Uh, I've got my hands full with this one. Right. A uh, big point in this location was so that we didn't have to move. Okay. So I know there's a lot of breweries where, you know, they'll open the initial one because it's like, hey, this space is what we could afford. And that's kind of what we did when we opened, too. It's like, hey, we, we can only afford this one 2,500 square foot suite. Um, and then when it comes time to open a second one, they normally, oh, well, this is our production facility. And now they're trying to manage two locations. And that's just a nightmare. So... We moved into the back of an industrial complex, so when we need more room, I punch a hole in the wall and take the next suite. I was going to say, there's some places next to you, and you can probably expand that way, maybe this way, right? Yeah, so. Yeah, sure. when it comes Perfect. time to expand again, I'll have to buy out my neighbor, which is 103 and 104, so I won't be able to take just one suite. We'll have to take both. Okay. But uh, they moved in in a weekend, so I'm pretty sure I could help them move out in the same amount of time. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Very cool. It's really important to us to make sure we're not growing so fast that we alter what we've built so far. Um, we have a really unique tasting room environment and it's something that I'm really proud of that we've built over time. We have the best people in the world and I know yeah. everyone feels that way and I, I'm sure that everyone has their, you know, their reason to, but we are so lucky because the people who come here <coughs> build these crazy great relationships. They're all so good to one another. Right. Um, you know, we've got a couple of people who met here that are getting married in a few weeks. We've got people who got sat together at an event that come and hang out together on a regular basis here now. Um, we have really good relationships with our customers. We treat this place like it's an extension of our home. And I, I feel like that shows and I feel like that that's been reflected back at us. And, you know, we're very, very lucky to be doing what we're doing. And it can be hard to balance the right amount of growth so that you right. maintain that atmosphere. So I know that that's a big priority for us is to make sure that we're not losing sight of, of what we've built thus far and becoming something completely different. So as we grow, we'll be taking care to make sure we're not changing too much. You're doing it right. You want to make sure you do it right. And like you said, growth or grow sake's not necessarily, you know, you don't need to do it, but you want to do it right. So yeah, it makes exactly. sense. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, if you look at it right now, way too many places are starting to downsize because they grew too fast. Right. And yeah. that's not something we want to run into. Um, goes back to that whole being self-funded, no loans, no investors. Um, we're not stuck in that vicious loop. It's yeah, not, hey, uh, the only way that we can pay off these other loans is with bigger fermenters. So let's take out a loan to get bigger fermenters. Okay, well, the only way we can pay off this new loan for the bigger fermenters to keep up with the old loan is if we make this beer and push it out before it's ready. So it's like, it's like getting a credit card to pay for your other credit card. Yep. Pay it's, your credit card off. That's what happens with a lot of people. And I mean, yeah. they, they don't have a choice but to grow way faster than they're prepared to. Yeah. And I mean, it's one of those, we do this because we love it. Um, I know you probably hear it from a lot of small business owners. and people, Oh, well, we're not in this for the money. I mean, we need to turn a profit to keep the place open. Right. And for me to be able to grow and get new toys in the back that make my life easier... But at the end of the day, we're not in this for the money. We're in it because I love doing what I'm doing back there. Yeah. To the point where we're going on three years and I still haven't brought someone else in to brew because I still love brewing back there. It can be 120 degrees, 125 degrees. All I've got back there is an evaporative cooler that does not work three months a year. <laughs> yeah. It's um, true here. So, I mean, it'll be back there and I will be just bright red and pour and sweat and try and not to die while I'm back there. Please and don't. you can ask Christina, I will yeah. still be back there with a stupid grin on my face. Um, <laughs> to the point where if I haven't brewed a beer for a week or two, I get down and into a funk. Yeah. yeah. So that's, that's kind of our goal is to keep growing at the pace where I can still stay back there brewing and don't have to lock myself in an office and bury myself behind paperwork. So whatever rate we can do that, it's the rate that we're going to grow at. Very cool. I mean, I think that's what a lot of people like. They don't understand that they can't run a business and brew the beer and do other things. And so it's very, it's it's really nice to see that you can re you realize that you're like, I, you, one, you don't want to do it. And two, that it's probably not good for the business to be able to, to actually be forced into that position. You know, mm -hmm. that actually, you know, you can separate the two out and you brew the beer and you have somebody else do this. And it's, it's way cool to see that. So 
Very good. There are a lot of businesses that grow really quickly and are very successful at it. Some of our, our favorite people in the industry are growing right now and expanding, and we're, we're crazy excited for them. Um, you know, going back to mentioning 1055, they're about to open another location out in Tucson. It's going to be a brew pub. It's going to be it's it's going to be incredible. Beer Research Institute just made a huge expansion, and they're going to be amazing too. And I have no doubt. Um, you know, growth is a great thing, and and we certainly want to see everyone in the industry grow at the rate that they're comfortable. But for us, that's just going to be a little slower than most because we want to make sure that we're maintaining a certain standard and we're maintaining a certain ability to be present. Ryan and I serve out of the tasting room four nights a week, I think. And that's become part of our brand. People come in here and and they get to sit and talk to the owners while they're drinking their beer. And there's not a lot of places you can do that at. We're the ones serving. We're the ones pouring. We're, we're constantly available to people. And I think that that's something that people have found to be very comfortable and special about our place, Um, you know, really unique. And that's something that we want to make sure we're continuing to do. We don't ever want to completely step back from the tasting room because we have great relationships with our customers. Some of my favorite people in the world I've met because they've come in here. Right. So I I know that that's that's certainly a key element for us is to maintain a, a level that doesn't take away from those abilities, from our ability to be as involved as we are. Very cool. Uh, so, and, and we actually, like I said, touched on the, a little bit there, but the, the canning, we saw you guys actually have a little bit of canning kind of going on with some of your, your beer you want to kind of go into that. And Yeah, so we're, um, I'm fighting with the uh, microphone, here, microphone in front of me. It just keeps slowly pulling away from my face. <laughs> the balancing act between having a microphone close enough but still having room for beer. Yeah, definitely, hundred percent true. <laughs> now you know our struggle every day, but or, uh, every podcast, I should say. Yeah, so um, we've done one bottle release, a couple of can releases. We're working towards um, getting a couple more bottles out, and then um, our flagships and cans. I've spent the past couple of months uh, working with our pixel artist, and then doing some work on my own as well to get the cans signed for the flagships. We're really excited about those. Um, I got the first set of proofs today. Second set that's going to be approved should be here in a couple of days. So I'm hoping to have the cans in about a month or two. And then um, we're not sure exactly how we're going to do it, but we've chatted about um, losing our minds and just doing a, uh, what were we going to call it? Release all the things. Release all the things. All the things. And um, releasing all four flagships in cans along with about... um, 150 or so bottles each of uh, last year's Ichabod Crane's Nightmare and uh, last year's Mayan Chocolosis in bottles as well. Nice. And just do one giant event and knock them all out at once. Oh, that'd be awesome. And then our goal is to always have the flagships um, in cans here. The caveat to that is uh, it goes back to that really just being one guy. Um, I do have my brewer's assistant, Josh, back there that helps on canning runs, but we're using a canning line that I built myself. Okay. So I built my own bottling line, switch out a couple of things and bang, it turns into a canning line. Um, still does everything right. Purges everything with CO2, leaves the foam on the top. So we're getting uh, professional grade canning, right. but it's not as fast. We can do 150, 160 cans in an hour, okay. which yep. sounds like a lot, but that's like 44 packs. <laughs> <laughs> we're and those go quick literally filling four bottles and or cans at a time. Yeah. Yeah, that's tough. But, yeah, we're really excited for that. Um, Right now, I really have my head buried in the sand getting ready for uh, Final Anniversary 3. For anybody listening that doesn't get the joke, we're not closing. (laughs) We hear that every year. Right. I was at Comic-Con last year, and somebody, my buddy said you guys closed like a year ago. I'm like, where would he have got that? I confused uh, final anniversary. It's a Final <laughs> Fantasy joke. So, uh, yeah, this one will be final anniversary three. Very nice. That way, if everything goes wrong and we do close some year, we can tell people, hey, we told you last year it was the final anniversary. <laughs> nice. It's the, it's the safety net. I like it. Bingo. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, we're working on that. Um, at this point, I've got 22, to, 22 different beers. Um, ready to tap for it. So, so without looking, go ahead and name all of them real quick. All right. We've no, got... I'm just fucking, I'm just trying to... <laughs> <laughs> he will, too. 
<laughs> I would say this. Uh, looking at that giant list over there of all the beers, it is super impressive. I mean, if you want to highlight a couple of them that you like stand out to you, feel free. Please do. But uh, so, and, and, and as of this recording, it is March 12th. This will probably come out in mid-March. So this is going to be April 7th, right? April yep, 7th. April 7th. And that list isn't finished. Oh We're going to have gosh. at least 30 different beers on tap. If I can get closer to 40, I'll be a really happy camper, but it just kind of depends on how quick I can get stuff done. Um, doing some really fun off-the-wall ones up there. We're bringing back um, our um, Rocky Road Limit Break, which was uh, the super secret surprise beer that I released last year. And that was that a name. blend of our uh, White Mage and Black Mage. Uh, blend those together, that's normally a limit break. It's on our little secret hidden menu. It's the one item. Um, <laughs> but last Take year, that in and out. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah, nothing. Um, so last year, it's like, oh, well, let me go ahead and do a limit break, and I'll put some fun stuff in it. So I figured it's like, all right, well, I'll put some extra chocolate in for the black mage. I'll put some vanilla in for the white mage. Cool. We'll, we'll have this, and we'll have the ultimate limit break. Got it all mixed up. Uh, tried it about four or five days in and realized that I had accidentally made a beer that tasted like liquid Rocky Road. <laughs> oh, no. And just kind of like, oh. That's kind of cool. Now it's going to be the Rocky Road beer. <laughs> um, we tapped it at the anniversary, and it was gone in 14 minutes. Wow. Nice. That's So nice. I figure it's worth bringing back one more year for them. Yeah, people might like that. Yeah, I'm just sure a somebody, somebody might appreciate that. Um, I did stash about five or six gallons of the barrel-aged Mayan Chocolasis that was kegged. So not the stuff that was in the bottle, um, the keg. The keg was amazing. Um, even though they all came out of the same batch, I have a feeling stuff layered just a little bit. And that one is, that one's boozy enough where pretty much if I close my eyes and tried that side by side with Black Tuesday, I might be able to tell them apart, which for me was great because kind of like Christina, I love Black Tuesday. Yeah, right. <laughs> yes, confirmed. It's an amazing beer. But yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, the Mind Chalk Losses is incredible. It's super complex, but... You, you know there's a lot going on, but you taste chocolate. Like, you, you, there's a whole bunch going on, but it's really just very chocolatey. And I, I agree, it's very similar. Uh, let's see, what else are we going to have in there? Going to do some different casks. Um, I was talking with you earlier. Yes. I'm going to take our um, offensive tanuki, which already smells like fruity pebbles because of the lime leaves that are in there. Um, we got those picked fresh this time. And I'm going to make a cask and just dump a bunch of fruity pebbles yeah. into it. So pour great. the beer in there and see if I can get it to carbonate using just the sugar and the fruity pebbles. Oh, so, you're speaking my language and, right now. Brian actually hurt himself for everybody listening to this podcast that's going to come to this. He Physical abuse to his body. He had to go pick these lime leaves from the valley so it's fresh ingredients. Yeah. Uh, he has the scars to prove it. Ask him when you see him. Pretty much <laughs> still uh, lots of little... It looks like I got into a fight with a cat and lost. Um, yes. And that was partly from the lime leaves and partly from a type of fruit called lime quats. So a lime quat? the place where I went and uh, got those lime leaves is um, it used to be a U of A research facility. Okay. So they have citrus there that hasn't even been released to the market that they were experimenting on. Like they've got U of A citrus 053. I mean, you didn't like, you know, grab a bucket or anything and just land around of that and just decide to make it. No, pretty much went there and uh, met the farmer. I stormed the castle. All right, cool. Excellent. Nice. So, uh, Make some buddies with that guy. Have him give you some of the experimental Funny thing is, fruits. we didn't even tell him we were coming. We just, like, <laughs> just showed I showed up. up there with a couple of buddies, and I'm like, hi, I own 8-Bit Ale Works, and I would like some of your citrus. <laughs> and he, like, drives up on a tractor. What are you doing here? <laughs> Trying to get citrus. He's like, get off my lawn, and he sprayed you <laughs> with the hose. Just about. But it's about nice. Now, actually, it was really cool. I found out afterwards that uh, he had actually been into the tasting room before and killed one of our kegs. Oh, so okay. he had one of our keg callers in his office. <laughs> That's perfect. But um, he Look, introduced me to their favorite in. fruit there, which is the lime quats, and it is a combination of a lime and a kumquat. Oh. And they're pretty much, they're about the size, God, it's hard to describe. They're maybe a little bit smaller than a quarter, so they're about the size of a regular kumquat. Okay. And they taste like a warhead candy. Nice. But you eat the entire thing. Wait, what? But you pop the whole thing in your mouth, the skin, the skin. flesh, everything. What? And, uh, Did he give you a basket and say, it's dangerous to go alone, take this? <laughs> he gave me a ladder. <laughs> 
Oh. They Chris- look like the world's tiniest lemons. It's adorable. <laughs> it's adorable. <laughs> Christina, actually, uh, I sent her a picture because uh, oh, it's a you pick farm, too. So a lot of those had just been picked clean at the bottom. Oh, yeah. So I went and borrowed about a 15, 20 foot ladder and just tipped it against the tree and spider monkeyed off or up to the top to make sure that I could pick uh, enough That's of the ripe ones. Excellent. He does Please. that all the time. He's, He's trying to give me a heart attack. That's how it works. Uh, we'll, we'll let her talk about that for a minute or two real fast. I say, are those... Are, that's going into a beer, though, at least? We, we, oh, yeah. Oh, they will eventually. Absolutely. Okay. They need to go into a beer. That sounds 100%, amazing. 100%. 100%. Yes. There, you know, there are very few things Ryan won't put into a beer. Okay. <laughs> but, yeah, he, he has a tendency to try to freak me out. Like, he'll climb up on things he's not supposed to <laughs> and terrify me in ways that are just not friendly. Um, so we're guys. Like, we're guys. It's what we do. That sounds right. like every husband's duty to be able to do that. Right? Precisely. I yeah. I, I walked in one day in the back and he's like on. So right now, the way things are set up, we have our pallet racking next door. We had to take over the suite next door. We needed more room. We were growing and expanding. We just needed more space. So we moved our fermenters over here and moved the pallet racking next door. But I did come in one day before we had done that. And the pallet racking was set up like pretty much against the, what is now the barrel room, but used to be our fermentation room. And he had spider monkeyed his way all the way to the top and was like halfway to actually climbing on top of the pallet racking, which had to be a good 20 feet high. I'm pretty sure he wants to know how far he can push before I just fall over and die. (laughs) That is is like the cutest little lemon ever in the world. That is the craziest thing ever. So exactly. the goal is oh, to put these in the white mage um, just eat for these? the anniversary. Yes. That's night. why I Literally just Literally just pop it in your mouth. Don't peel it. You have to, because the you center is the really, really thing. sour. The skin is where the sweetness is. Really? This, all right. And there's going to be some seeds in there, but you can eat all of it. I don't really care. Can they see our faces? Because it'll be highly entertaining. Oh, yeah. They can see our faces. Good. I, yes. You're going to turn away because they can't see it? <laughs> I've done this. Oh, okay. <laughs> I've had this. I, I, it's... Well, thank Go you. This it. is cheers, awesome. Guys. Thanks, cheers. That's amazing. Yeah, it's a warhead. That's like a, yeah, super ultimate citrus bomb. <laughs> that are, that's really good. I love sour beers. That I is. I love sour candies. And once you chew it for another minute and that skin really gets loose, you'll start to catch all that sweetness. So I'm going to put these I entire things, that. run them through the food processor, food processor, Sorry, I'm talking with my <laughs> mouth full. Sorry if you're listening, Barb. Mom. <laughs> that is awesome. No, that was really... That was I really can't good. wait to have a beer with these in them. That's oh, my God. Super great. God, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. It was, we don't do normal here. That, thank and this you. is why you talk thank with you. your local farmers, because you find out about the top secret fruit that most people don't know about, and then you throw it in a beer. Yeah, that's amazing. <laughs> so that's good. amazing. Yeah. Wow. Oh, we should put it in Hops Hassan's. I just had a sip of my beer, and that Ooh. was freaking amazing. Let me try it. And that's where the ideas come from, folks. Pretty much. Wow, that is really good. All that right. That is super good. Make it. Let's do this. I've got enough for two. <laughs> yes. That's how he came up with the garlic beer. He was eating, like, a garlic hummus one night and drinking, what, a blood orange goes, was it, at the time? Mm-hmm. Um, from Anderson Valley. Mm-mm. No, it wasn't theirs? It was ours. Oh, it was our blood orange goes? Oh, I thought mm-hmm. it was Anderson. Oh, whatever. He's drinking a blood orange goes, eating a garlic hummus, and he goes, oh, these things go together really well. I'm going to make a garlic goes. And I just look at him and I'm go, don't you please, dare. Please, please don't. I'm like, no, that is a bad plan. And he's like, yeah, no, I'm going to make a garlic goes. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh, my gosh. And then he did. Yes. The funny thing is we've been together so long. I didn't even have to tell her. She looked over at me and said no before I even said it. Because apparently I have a specific look that I get on my face when I get a I'm going to throw weird stuff and beer idea. Ah, perfect. And she picked that out immediately. Said, no. No. Like what? No. No. You're not going to do it. Like, Let's throw garlic in a beer. She just grab a newspaper and roll it up and just that hit you sounds with it real like, quick. That sounds like no. the ultimate beer to drink with pizza. I get mean, one of our. Uh, hello. Actually, when we released it, one of our regulars up. Uh, so if people weren't eating food with that beer, it was 50-50. 50% of them loved it. 50% of them abhorred it. Like drain pour. Oh, man. Level. 
if somebody was eating food with it, it was 100% across the board. So one of our regulars ordered a 36-inch pizza from Gus's. <laughs> the delivery guy had to turn it sideways a little bit to fit it through the door. Nice. I was about to open the bay door in the back and just let him bring the Come pizza around. in through that. <laughs> That's beautiful. But, uh, bring it in like freight. Yeah. Right? Uh, once he brought that pizza, he just told everybody, "Is like, anybody that's ordering the garlic goes, just have a slice of pizza with it. Very and cool. It never should have worked, but boy, did it. Yep. Some pizza. That's, yeah. That's where my brain goes. It's like, I bet that's good with pizza. It really was. It really or like was. garlic or like, knots. Or like, yeah, garlic oh, knots, pretzels. I, garlic I mean, knots. come on. Yeah. Now we're, this is going to be food talk radio Meatball now. Meatball sando. <laughs> come on. All the foods. <laughs> All the foods. So, uh, can I suggest that if you guys do expand, you just make an arcade bar as well? Because like, you have a couple arcade machines in here. Can you just make more arcade bars all around here? You know what's really funny is... And then the last bar fighter get in here too as well? Well, hey, I'm, I'm that not I gotta that. get my hands on. Okay, yeah. no, that Depending on cool. Arizona liquor law. Token. Naturally. You get a token. You don't actually... I mean, you're not paying for the beer that way. You're not gambling for the beer. You're playing a token. Well, it's a game of skill if you've got to beat your buddy at a video game exactly. as a fighter. Yes. Yep. We um, Boom. We Loophole. had talked about, and, and someday still want to do this, so our seasonals are called our mini boss and our boss beers. I love um, that. Naturally, the, the boss is a little bit bigger, a little stronger, a little scarier than the mini boss each season. And um, so every quarter of those change out. And we've talked about for years that eventually we're going to make this work, but we actually have a system um, that will allow us to track the flow through a given tap handle so that we can see like how much of a beer has been used. Right. And we really want to use that to create boss battles. Like this is our dream. Right, right, right. right. <laughs> As in a health bar on an animated eight bit boss that's projected up on the wall. And as those kegs drain, so does its health bar. Oh, right. that's amazing. That's, and in a perfect world, once I can get that mastered, I want to go so far as to remove the health bar and just make that boss take physical damage. So, you know, hey, at 100% health, it's this huge hulking thing. You know, right. 80% health, it's a little more beaten down. Hits, say, 10%, and this thing's, you know, just bleeding out all the holes, trying to so hold it's, itself it's, up. It's like the BJ Blazkowicz little face from the original Wolfenstein, where it just like slowly, yes. just like bingo. You know, yes, it's exactly. like gets a little nosebleed, and then you know by the end, like when he's about five percent, he just like looks like death warmed over. Yeah, but yep. get, like a happy hour, you do like a raid battle with a bunch of people <laughs> to come in and actually yeah, do right. a battle. That'd be great. God, yeah. Let's let's make that happen. Let's get on top of that. It's, who who we know makes this happen fast? It's both amazing and incredibly difficult because. Because of the theme that that we settled on and chosen what we're doing with everything, settled on. Well, I don't mean what in a bad way. No, 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 no. I don't mean in a bad way. I just mean <laughs> we had some ideas, and the the one that we decided Podcast was over. Oh God, we go. oh God, we broke up a marriage. <laughs> That's well, the second one this week, huh? Yeah, it home, wasn't guys. your fault. Trust me, this was coming. No, I'm, kidding, uh, I'm, kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm um, Half of my identity is Mrs. Eight Bit now. I don't have a choice anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I, I just mean of all the ideas that we had, this was the one that we decided was the right one. And it's amazing because we have all these really, really cool concepts and things that we want to do with it. And, you know, both of us are gamers. We both love this stuff. So we incorporate it in yeah. everything we do here. But it can be really, really difficult to execute all of the fun things that we create, come up with. Makes sense. So um, that's one of those things where we've talked about this since before the brewery was even open. We knew we wanted to do this boss battle thing. And uh, we're still working on it. It'll happen eventually. That like, would be awesome. Just do it like punch out. You just do a punch out style more. So we've got that already coming too. Man, it's like, I know, that's like a no dramas in this thing. So uh, on that same barrel aging board, you'll notice yes. we have a punch out imperial stout that's sitting in uh, Knob Creek barrels and some in a maple bourbon barrel. Our goal with that is uh, to have anywhere from four to six different variants of it. Um, and we'll bottle all of those, but they're all gonna be based on the different punch out characters. Oh, so like soda pop. the maple bourbon soda one. Popinski. That's right. Um, I don't know how to do one for him yet. He was originally drinking beer from what I understand. Yeah. And they had to switch it because of kids. That's why his name is Soda Pop. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, like, we know pretty much a how bit. close we can get to stuff. Right. So it's one of those we want to take the maple bourbon one and probably throw um, chocolate and coffee into it and do glass of Joe. 
Uh, oh, I see what you did there. Um, I've got another one that we're using a tiger chai in, and I can never remember the name of the tiger guy that was in there. Um, I just remember how to insta KO him. Yeah, go figure. <laughs> Priorities. Don't yes. wiggle that little head at me. I'll knock it yeah. off. Yeah, here it comes. Oh, he did it. Blam. Blue. He's out. But you yes. know, all kinds of stuff like that, and then of course the coup de gras is going to have the, to be a he, double barrel blend of half Knob Creek and uh, half the Maple Bourbon, and well, that's going to be face tattoo because he can't sue me for that. Nice. <laughs> Kudos. Very nice. Kudos to you for that. May have Love put it. a little bit of thought into this. Just, just a touch. It's like you spent nights thinking about this. It's weird. Actually, I, love I spent it. the entire brew day thinking about it because it was the brew day from hell, which is why it got named Punch Out because it kicked my butt. Oh, nice. You're running behind a guy on a bike in the back. Pretty much. Nice. Perfect. I love it. And I brewed that one in July. Bad plan. <laughs> I love it. While she was recovering from surgery, I think. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's so I didn't even that. have tasting room help that time. Nope. I was, was like, yep, I'm I'm dead in the water. This beer was a bad plan. I was at like, home dying. Like, like, like you said, she left you alone. Yeah. yeah. One of these days I'll learn. Beer wound up in barrels. <laughs> yeah. Mm, well, I went on a shopping spree. Uh, he acts like I didn't basically force him to buy a vanilla bourbon barrel to put s'more night in. Ooh, I got all those things. <laughs> Love them. <laughs> so if people want to actually find out more information and actually find out the full list of you guys' beers, where is the best place for them to actually go look for that information at? Um, we actually do have uh, Untapped, like we set ourselves up as a verified venue. Okay. So nice thing about that is you can check our uh, tap list. I update it at least once a week. Um if you check it on like a Saturday, Sunday, it may still have the hacked beer from Tuesday. Those barely last the day. Okay. Um, you can access that through uh, Facebook too if you click the uh, beer menu on there. And actually, I have the menu tied live into our site as well. So, facebook.com slash 8 works, 8 com. Go to Untapped and search for us. Perfect. And on the website, it's 8 bitaleworks.com. We spell it properly. Thank you. Ooh. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. I probably need to buy both. Yeah, probably. Just redirect. Yeah. But there you go. So that it's easier for now. <laughs> All the domains. That's right. Perfect. So Facebook, uh, you guys are on Instagram as well. We are. Mm-hmm. Eight bit. Is it eight bit? It works on Instagram as well. Yep. Yeah. Eight bit. It works. So on Instagram, Facebook, there's no dash. They won't let me put one in there. Yeah. They're so jerks. I pout a little bit Rude. and then get over it. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. Well, I mean, thanks for talking to us today. That was actually really fun. I had a really good time. Jeff. We need to get into where people can find us on social media. They can find us at Hoppy Craftsman on Instagram, Hoppy Craftsman on Facebook um, to find our blog and links to pretty much everything we do. We are at hoppycraftsman.beer. Yeah, we're super cool nice. like that. Yeah, top beer. Ooh, top beer. <laughs> I know, right? Crushing it. Had to get it. This works. Don't blame you. <laughs> yeah. And then the uh, raddest people in the world, Jeff, are? Raddest people in the world are Cena Gomez, San Diego Beer Talk Radio, Mark Ballesteros, Javier Gonzalez, and Phil Mitchell Wall. These are our Patreon supporters. Um, You are the guys that, you know, they give us contributions every month from, I don't know what the tiers are. There, are a little as a dollar up to $5,000 if you want to get crazy. That's which is insane awesome tier. if you want to party with this. So to do that, you yeah. find us on www.patreon.com forward slash hoppy craftsmen. We appreciate every cent you guys give us. Uh, like Chris has said before, surprisingly, podcasts can be kind of expensive. So it costs money. You, know, you, you guys <laughs> contribute money and we appreciate every cent you guys give us. So thank you very much. Jeff and Chris are awesome. Support them. Yeah, see? Thanks. Yeah, what see? she said. <laughs> see, Christina gets it. They're not even you guys paying know. me for God, this. come on. <laughs> All right, guys. So thanks for uh, thanks for being here again. We really super appreciate it. Thanks for taking your, your Monday night uh, away from paperwork and talking to us, Ryan. It's for that. And then Monster Hunter, I'm sorry. Pull you away from that. But There's I'll tempered monsters you. to kill, man. Uh, we got, there's still, there's still I've got darkness. a floof bat and a photography <laughs> raptor to take down. Nice. Let's do this. <laughs> I'm more forgiving than Ryan, so I won't hold it against you for too long. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> All right, guys. As, a, I'm, as always, I am Chris. I'm Jeff. Drink local. Thanks, guys. <laughs> <laughs>